Shanghai is tipped to become the preeminent financial centre in Asia. Hello, I'm Stuart Pallister, the editor-in-chief of Think Business, and we're here in Shanghai for the fifth WeChat Ya Forum on Banking and Finance. China may be on the way to becoming the world's largest economy, but right now there are challenges. Slowing economic growth, a banking system that's maxed out, as one panelist put it, with credit at 200% of China's GDP, and over the past decade, nearly three trillion U.S. dollars has left the country. No one knows where it came from, nor where it went to. As lawyer and NUS visiting professor Anthony Nyo puts it, the guess is it's due to tax evasion and corruption. Now companies are struggling to raise funds in the capital markets, as China's Securities Regulatory Commission, the CSRC, banned IPOs, with the result that banks need to reduce their lending or somehow increase their capital. Despite, in fact, uh, we see uh, a growth in our GDP in the past few years, although it is slowing, but it's still one of the most stellar gro growths around the world. Uh, we we do not have, in fact, at the moment. Uh, a particularly vital stock market. Now, as a result, the capital markets have become dysfunctional. In other words, it is not performing the function that it should be performing, raising money for good businesses uh, in the real economy. At present, there are limits to the amount of foreign funds coming into the financial markets due to the Qualified Institutional Investor Scheme, or QFI. For now, China's asset management industry faces challenges and uncertainty. That make you worry, uh, but uh, for the long term, I'm, I'm very positive. I think uh, number one overall, uh, Chinese uh, economy will still grow. You know, it's not the eight and a half, but uh, you know, the state council already said this uh, about seven percent. That's the low side, and that's a very fast growth. But and at the same time, the capital market is still need our service. There are lots of uh, projects, lots of business need the capital. At the same time, there are lots of wealth individuals. They are accumulating lots of wealth. They need to invest somewhere. Take, for example, the fund industry. It's grown quickly over the past 15 years, with assets under management ballooning some 350 times to about 4 trillion renminbi. I think nowhere else in the world you can see this kind of growth rate. But there again, a large part of this asset are actually controlled by the big boys. Competition is, is really is going to, to, to um, increase a lot. So that will force the fund houses to really think of a way to develop their core competency. Private equity could play a role in stimulating the economy. But the forum heard local entrepreneurs are looking to cash out and move funds overseas rather than invest in Chinese companies. PE as the most effective, I would say one of the most effective ways to invest in real economy, to help real economy, uh, will face a lot of uh, challenges in convincing wealthy individuals that this is a vehicle that they should invest uh, in the long term to generate uh, you know, superior returns for their money. They're not convinced. According to Peter Alexander, who heads a boutique investment house, China's a very emotional button. You either love it or hate it. It's funny, the, the foreign community, um, when everything looks great in China and they want to get in, it's next to impossible to get in. Well, there's difficulty in getting QFI, there's difficulty in doing a JV. So the foreigners, oh, they want in and, and yet they have a hard time getting in. And then all of a sudden, when it's really easy to get in, like right now, the foreigners don't want anything to do with China. On the sidelines of the forum, Huabao CEO Qian Jian told Think Business that when the markets run ahead of regulators, there may be hiccups rather than major problems, but Shanghai's star is clearly rising. Comparing to Hong Kong or Singapore, it's not as uh, uh, international, for example. But, uh, uh, you know, if, if we keep uh, doing the work and they try to, to get the same terms, you know, legal structure, everything, I, I see tremendous growth potential. For Anthony Nyo, a former chief advisor to the CSRC, it's only a matter of time before Shanghai's financial industry does open up, even though it's facing difficulties now. From what you've been saying, it seems as though the, the capital markets are, are really struggling. 
they are struggling mainly because there's a lot too much emphasis placed on the banking system for financing the real economy, uh, with a result that the uh, banking market at the moment is, is being overstrained. So it's time to return to the uh, capital markets uh, in order to fund the real economy. So how serious are the problems? The problems are very serious at the moment because the, uh, the capital markets at the moment are not performing the function of raising capital. Uh, IPOs have stopped. So uh, that is a very serious uh, situation uh, which has to be reversed as soon as possible. Uh, and, and I know the CSRC is working on this and, and uh, the sooner they, they place IPO back on track, the better. But you are expecting Shanghai to become increasingly internationalized and perhaps to become the preeminent financial center within Asia. I can certainly see that because the stock market is going to be very important. It's already a very big stock market. I think with the return of IPOs, it will grow bigger. Uh, the Shanghai futures exchanges are very large. Uh, at, at the moment, the commodities exchange uh, uh, in Shanghai is placed 13th in the world and some commodities uh, second or third uh, uh, and uh, I know that they are going uh, for a uh, crude oil contract so that would actually again place this on an international map. NUS finance professor Joseph Cherin who moderated the panel discussion believes China's asset management industry is at a turning point. It's growing tremendously it's reforming there are new policies in place there are a lot more opportunities, not just for local asset managers, but foreign asset managers. But you have to navigate through the system, whether it's the regulators, the investors, or the investor himself, uh, investment management community itself. Uh, they're challenges. But that said, I'm confident that the Chinese government and its regulators will see through these problems and issues. Uh, it's, it depends on how open they are to the criticisms of both in domestic and uh, overseas investors uh, and how open they are to changing those policies and speeding up the reforms. For NUS Business School, I'm Stuart Pallister in Shanghai.